Every draft, there are a handful of polarizing players that get everyone all worked up. Those guys no one can agree on. He's too small, his production is too power play dependent, his style won't translate to the NHL. Around and around it goes as analysts debate a player's merits on draft specials and podcasts everywhere. But every so often, a player comes along that can have these debatable notions, but everyone gets on the same page and agrees that they just aren't going to matter for this guy. For the 2022 NHL entry draft, that player is Matthew Savoy. He isn't big, he's racked up numbers with the man advantage, and what position he'll play in the NHL is definitely up for debate, and yet, you'll be hard pressed to see him ranked outside the top 5 prospects for this season. And that's because he is that good and that much fun to watch. Savoy is a sniper, no doubts about it. Watching his tape, it's clear that he possesses a lot of the hallmarks of top goal scorers, but what sets him apart is that he relies more on his brain rather than natural ability. Breaking down his shooting sequence, the first thing I noticed was that he almost always shoots through traffic. Seriously, just keep an eye on how many of these goals are scored with either a player net front, or more frequently, with a player right in front of Savoy. This does two things for him. First and foremost, obviously, if the goaltender's view is obstructed so they can't see an incoming puck, it's harder for them to stop. But there are two ways of that happening. First is the bodies in front method, which you see a lot because it's so simple. Stick some bodies in front of his face and he can't see it. The second, though, is something sneaky that top goal scorers do. Have someone in front of you so that the goaltender can't key themselves off your shot. Goaltenders are trained to watch a shooter's stick blade looking for signs a shot will be taken. It's what triggers them to drop in a butterfly, or lets them know if it's a low shot or it's going top shelf based on the openness of the blade, etc. Doing anything you can to obscure that with traffic gives the goaltender that much less time to react and makes the puck harder to track without seeing the release point. Savoy makes up for his lack of blazing fast shot speed by taking advantage of this. The other thing that shows off how smart he is with his shot is his placement. Firing it off through traffic and with obscured releases opens up goaltenders to be beat under their arms. The low shot trajectory is harder to pick up and track than a high shot, and as I've said before in these videos, goalies will keep their arms up when dropping into butterfly, leaving these 6 and 7 holes open. Savoy picks this weakness apart, shooting low through traffic and picking not the corners, but the side of the net. Finally, he does this with the aid of his stick. Savoy seems to play with a slightly short stick for a player of his size, and this gives him better control over the puck and his shot. It doesn't help with power, as there is less stick to leverage, but if Savoy is going to rely on his brain, then I say give him the best tool for what he wants to do. Puck handling is an obvious strength of Savoy's game, and as stated just before, the shorter stick helps here. He plays low, crouched over the puck, and with wide hand placement giving him incredible control and ability to operate in tight spots. It's also what allows him to suck defenders in tight to hide his shot release, as they have to body him up rather than playing the well-protected puck. This stamp and body usage does affect his ability to see the ice, something which he could already struggle with at the next level, as his listed 5 foot 9 inch frame might limit him in some situations. However, his vision is top-notch and his passing is almost always on point. I love the way he tries to think big with his passes too, always looking for a cross-ice setup or sending it to the point when there's traffic net front. He's never looking to just move the puck, he's looking to see who can actually score if given the chance. Skating is perhaps his biggest and best skill set. He has good, long, full strides that give him great top-end speed, but what blows me away is his explosiveness. Savoy can go 0-60 to 60 as fast as anyone, and he can do it from any starting angle too. He knows how to use his edges to keep or build speed while moving laterally or transitioning forward to back and vice versa, and he knows how to use those edges to make some incredible quick cuts and dekes. 
power moves to the net are an option for him, though rather than taking the traditional I'm going through you approach, he just blows past defenders using his speed and puck handling to get up close and personal with the opposing netminder. His speed and transition will kill at the next level, and his ability to use the whole offensive zone because of his fearlessness and quick cuts is truly something to watch. Defensively, he leaves some to be desired. It is clear it isn't a large focus of his game, and he doesn't have an innate sense of how best to disrupt the opposing team. Rather, he is usually the last player back, opting to wait for an opportunity to break back up the ice and catch the opposing team in transition. This works fine in Major Junior, but will have to change at the next level. His lack of size doesn't concern me here, as we've seen plenty of small, skilled forwards back check with the best of them, but it does mean Savoy has to play smart. I think he's totally capable of this, given his smarts and abilities in other areas of his game, but the defensive aspect is just going to have to be something he gets coached on and works at. Give him a couple years, and I'm sure he won't be a major liability. Looking at his future NHL outlook and player comp, I see Savoy settling in as a good to great NHL player. On the plus side, he has fantastic offensive ability, and should he find a line mate or two that he really gels with, the sky's the limit from a point production standpoint. On the other hand, I can see him struggle at times, particularly at 5-on-5 five five, if he doesn't have the right kind of supporting cast or system to play in. Ultimately. I see Savoy as settling in somewhere between Patrick Kane and Jonathan Drouin. He has the offensive skill to create offense and run a power play like Kane, using his speed and skill to deke guys out, dish it with the best of them, and score at a healthy clip. But if things don't line up right for him, if he isn't given the freedom to work or have creative teammates around him, I could see him struggle to generate offense on his own as defenses clamp down on him. Like Druen, figuring out where he goes in a lineup could be a challenge and stunt his growth if not gotten right. I personally would move him to the wing and keep him there for at least two or three years while he grows and rounds out his game. Give him a long leash to be creative and figure out what he can do and get away with at the NHL level. Build a strong level of confidence because if anything is going to limit his potential, it'll be a lack of confidence in his game. The last thing you want your creative, high skill, top draft choice doing is questioning themselves, and I think that the team that drafts Savoy needs to be aware of that. But if handled well, you could have a 25 plus goal scorer who can run your power play from anywhere while leading your team in scoring, and that is certainly worth taking high in the draft. Thanks everyone for tuning in to the latest edition of A Former Scout's Take. I had a ton of fun putting this one together, and I hope you enjoyed it. Before you leave, if you could leave a like or comment, that would be great, and would help other hockey fans find this report, as well as the other ones leading up to the draft this year. And, if you like this kind of content, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of our future uploads. Thanks.